Hello students we will now try to find out the thermal conductivity of a good conductor by using searle's method something like this we have already seen in the laboratory uh, if i open it up then the diagram will look something like this it looks something like this i'm extremely sorry for my little uh, not so good diagram but should be able to manage the show this one is a steam generator normally it's a copper uh, vessel which is kind of in that cylindrical in shape and this is the heater on which it is kept the heater will be plugged into a, a plug source and when this heater it's a hot plate when it gets hot it will heat up this copper vessel there is water filled up in the copper and the outlet of the copper vessel is connected to the inlet of the steam chamber fine now this one is the entire setup of the searle's method this one is a steam chamber i have already blocked that steam inlet the steam will go from here and the steam will come out of there we don't want a pressure cooker like situation that's why we have used the steam outlet here we are using a thermal conductivity of a good conductor by using searle's method good conductor now you might ask me sir is there a uh, thermal conductivity of a bad conductor or bad conductor also yes there is thermal conductivity of a bad conductor also and there is also an experiment which can be used to find thermal conductivity of a bad conductor but that will be not searle's method but that will be known as a lee's disk method uh, fortunately that is not there in the syllabus so you don't have to worry much about it so we will only uh, be bothered about the searle's method okay okay we have the steam generator steam from here will get into the steam chamber and will come out of the steam outlet now this one is the rod whose coefficient of thermal conductivity is to be found out it's a good conductor so what we do is we put one portion of this rod into this steam chamber and we block it and pack it okay then we drill two holes in these two uh, in this slots provided here and we put two or three drops of mercury inside it fine and then we put thermometers t1 and t2 into the two holes what these uh, what the mercury drops do is it's like dipping the bulb of the thermometer in that liquid so what that uh, mercury liquid will do is it will absorb the heat from this rod it will become hot and that heat will in turn be transferred to the bulb of the thermometers and that thermometers will show a correct temperature see without the mercury being put in these two slots what will happen is it will not be able to correctly measure the temperature of the rod so when we put that drops of mercury into this then what will happen is it will absorb that heat and that heat in turn will be passed on to the bulb of the thermometer it's like immersing the bulb in the uh, mercury so that's when it will happen now you may ask me now you may ask me sir can we not put water here instead of mercury you can put water also but what will happen is because the thermometer because the rod will continuously be heating the water will evaporate from here and then again the thermometers will not show a correct temperature see the idea of putting mercury in these two slots is that mercury has a very high boiling point correct therefore what will happen it will not get evaporated therefore we can ensure that it will keep getting heated up by this rod and it will correctly show the two thermometers to correct temperatures fine then what is the next part this entire portion is a spiral which is wound over the end b of the metallic rod here we have one end of the spiral which is the water inlet again there is a slot for the thermometer t3 to be kept and water will pass through here it will go through there it will come through here it will come through here and it will come out of this particular end which is the water outlet now this spiral is wound over the metallic rod therefore what will happen whatever is the temperature of the metal the heat part will absurdly be absorbed by the spiral and the spiral will in turn become hot Now because the spiral is hot and we are passing water through the spiral the water also will absorb 
heat from the spiral so the water which is coming out of the spiral will be hotter as compared to water which is going into the rod correct so the temperatures of the water which is going in will be different from temperature of the water which is coming out so we have four thermometers thermometer 1 thermometer 2 thermometer 3 and thermometer 4 now here i have shown this drops of water falling so when water will be going into this it will pass through the spiral it will come out and we have to uh, hold this water we have to gather this water for a certain period of time and then we have to take the mark we'll get that do it little later on how is our experiment to be started you put water in this copper vessel keep it over the heater start boiling it steam will be produced then the steam will go enter the steam chamber it will go out of the steam outlet but in turn what it will do it will heat up the end air of the metallic rod because it is a good conductor the metallic rod will then gradually pass on the heat to the other parts of the metal from a to b okay so then slowly the next element of a will get heated so next part next part so this part will get heated up the thermometer t1 will start showing a rise in temperature as the heat passes on from here it will again heat up the portion this one then the thermometer t2 will start showing a rise then it slowly it will go up here it will also heat up the spiral the water which is passed will also be absorbing the heat and the temperatures t4 and t3 also will show a gradual rise now the question is still when will you conduct the experiment see you cannot conduct the experiment for infinitely long time because the but the bar may get uh, melted or whatever may happen but it will not continue for infinite time you only have to continue for that period of time when all <coughs> these four thermometers will show a steady temperature steady temperature means say for example i'll i'll just write it down so steady means t1 suppose is at say 85 degree centigrade t2 suppose is at say 78 degree centigrade say t3 is at say uh, 35 degree centigrade and t4 is at say 45 degree centigrade so now if this is the temperature which is being shown at that steady state the temperatures will not go up beyond this point so even if you carry out the experiment for another 10 15 20 20, 20 minutes also the temperatures will not go beyond 85 or 78 or 35 or 45 so at this time what you do is you collect the outgoing water for a certain period of time say for uh, say for 30 seconds or 1 minute or whatever may happen then note down the temperatures t3 t4 t1 and t2 then you can uh, disconnect this particular setup be very very careful with this disconnection because it's extremely hot you don't have you don't want uh, to burn yourself your hand up or whatever so you can do it very very carefully and then after you have noted down all these four temperatures you take a vernier caliper and measure the diameter of this rod okay you measure the diameter of this rod then you take a scale and measure the distance between the thermometers t1 and t2 what should you be doing first measure t1 t2 t3 t4 then you can uh, collect the water uh, for a few seconds or for a minute or so and then take a vernier caliper measure the diameter now let's look at the uh, observation what is the observation now first of all you are measuring the uh, water water's mass so water you have measured the mass then you have taken theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and theta 4 then you have measured the distance between these two i'll, I'll mark it there that's equal to d fine so that is your d which is the distance between the two thermometers and let a uh, d uh, diameter of the metal rod be capital d that's that then so r will be equal to d by 2 from this from here you can get the area a is equal to 
so the area a is equal to pi d square by 4 if you take the diameter and the entire thing will also be equal to pi r square so both will be the same either you solve pi d square by 4 the answer will be the same or you take pi r square the answer also will be the same so this will be a now how do you measure the mass see now volume of the water you have collected now this one here is a volumetric beaker so whatever volume whatever is whatever the water is collected it will show in cc in the volume so that cc value you note down here let that be equal to v and we already know what is density of water now, so mass of the water will be equal to volume multiplied by the density so this way you have already found the mass so we have got the mass you got the area you have already found the distance between the two thermometers small d and you can also note down the specific heat s of the water which is readily available from the tables so specific heat of water and the density of water is what is readily available from the table you can use that value for your calculations mass you have already found out area you have already found out using this finally what you do is and you also know for how much time you have collected the water for let it be in seconds if you have taken for 30 seconds t will be 30 seconds then you can you can calculate the value of the coefficient of thermal conductivity by using the formula this one please remember theta 4 minus theta 3 why have i taken it that's because theta 4 is temperature of the outgoing water which is more as compared to theta 3 which is a measure of the incoming water which is less in a similar manner what is theta 1 theta 1 is the temperature of this thermometer which is more as compared to theta 2 therefore i have taken theta 1 minus theta 2 and what is this t this t is the time for which the uh, the, the water is collected i just forgot this and this is your area what is this a a is the area of the area of the cross sectional area of this metallic rod and a you have already found out from here so you put all these values keep either in mks or cgs or si unit and calculate the value of k so this is what you have to uh, write in the examination as well um, try to draw don't go into so much of details for the examinations just write in steps that should be more than enough